Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gary from eFuture. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving this webinar about uh, creating active listeners in your classroom. So I'm going to go over a bit of uh, how to teach listening in the classroom and even some uh, tips to kind of teach online given the situation. Okay, so to start, I wanted to do a quick introduction of myself. So I have a few things here um, about myself I kind of blocked out. So I want kind of the chat to kind of guess some things about myself here. So the first thing here about myself, I've taught English in South Korean public school for how many years? So I'm going to try to be more interactive with uh, everyone in the chat. So please uh, be active and see how many years, uh, just to start, how many years do you think uh, have I taught in public school before uh, joining eFuture? So I see eight, seven, and six, seven. Let's see how many people read my bio as well. I think I had it in my bio. So this is a little uh, pre-test as well. A lot of sevens. So I am a ten. Okay, that's good. Five. All right. Okay, so how many years I taught in South Korean public school? Uh, I see a lot of the correct answers. The answer is seven, seven years. So I taught taught um, about fifth and sixth grade students for seven years in public school, uh, just English. And it was some of the best times <laughs> here so far, okay? So a little bit more personal things. Um, so about me, so I was born in a different country, but I, I was born in one country, but grew up in a different country. So what are the two countries you think? So where was I born and where did I grow up? What kind of things do you think? Where, where do you think? Have I, where was I born and grew up? Might be a little bit of a difficult one, but maybe the growing up one might be a bit easier for you guys, but I'll be surprised if I can see uh, any guesses about uh, where I was born. Uh, Michael, you're cheating. <laughs> what country? Country. Let me guess. So if you take it from Michael, Michael's, yeah, correct. The first one is the Philippines. Michael's correct with the Philippines. So my family is Filipino. But I did grow up in the U.S. I did grow up in the U.S. So that's uh, all my schooling, elementary school, middle school, high school, university, all in the U.S. Okay, so yeah, I lived in the U.S. from two years old. So I was born in the Philippines and then my family uh, moved over to the U.S. Okay, and then another question here. How old do I look? So I was born on July 2nd, 19, what year do you think? How old do I look? And I will not feel offended. <laughs> 87, okay, over 30, all right. 89, okay. 90, thank you, Sunny. Oh, 26, Bella, thank you. <laughs> 26. So some really close ones. So actually, I was born in 19, 88. So that would make me 31 going on 32. So over 30 is the correct answer. Okay. And then last one for a little fun fact. How many countries have I traveled to? So I'll give you a hint. More than one. <laughs> so you already have a hint here of where I was born and where I grew up. 14. Okay. Five. All right. Get a few more guesses before I re reveal the answer. 10, okay, some good guesses. All right. Okay. So the answer actually is 16. It's really close, in between 10 and that 20. Yeah, so I'm hoping to add more. I've been to China a few times last year. Uh, of course, I'm t uh, working here in South Korea, grew up in the States, 
born in the Philippines. So I've been traveled many countries, hoping to go to many more in the future. Hopefully back to China soon as well. Okay, so that's a short introduction of myself. Okay, so today for this webinar, there's a few goals that I would like to have for everyone. Um, I'm hoping that people and all you teachers will learn something new that you can use with your students, whether it's um, any activities or some teaching tips um, that I can provide for you today. And then I hope that you will participate in the chat. I do want to kind of interact with you, ask you guys questions, and hopefully uh, get some answers from you as well. Uh, I, I always, uh, when I give seminars, I mean, I can always tell you my experiences as a teacher, but I feel like as well, we're all teachers and we all have our own experiences, so I hope that we can share our experiences together as well. And most importantly, let's have a little bit of fun. So I know it's kind of difficult to do activities uh, through webinars, but I do have a few listening activities today that um, I hope you guys will participate in. Um, I will say, if you don't have one in front of you now, uh, later when we do do some activities, uh, you will need a pen and paper. So have that kind of ready um, if you can. All right, so let's get started. So here's kind of the agenda today for the listening webinar. So kind of go over what is listening, um, talk about the challenges, and then kind of go into teaching, give you some tips, and some activities that you can use um, for each stage of listening. Yeah? So let's get started. So first, big question here, our main focus today, what is listening? Okay, so I'll bring this to the chat. What, is, what do you think is listening? What do you think the definition is of listening? Also, if I uh, talk too quickly, please let me know in the chat. I can slow down. <laughs> yeah. So listening is understanding. OK, good. What other things? So what, in, what does listening mean? What is listening? Don't be shy. Kind of ability, okay? Yeah, listening is. Yeah. Listening rose. Thanks, Sue. <laughs> what is listening? Input. Good. Listening is a kind of input. You can understand what you hear. Good. So listening is receiving language through the ears. Okay, so obviously we listen to our ears. So it's receiving the language, but then also identifying the sounds, the sounds of the speech. And then identifying those sounds and processing them, processing them into words and sentences. So like you said, kind of understanding what you hear. So you receive the language, kind of identify what you're listening to, and then process them into, you know, the understanding part. Yeah? So that is what is listening. So I'm going to do a quick uh, listening exercise to start out with you guys. Yeah? So I'm going to play an audio, try to listen the best that you can, and then I'm going to ask three questions about the audio. Okay? So try to listen carefully and uh, see if you can uh, um, get the answers for the questions that I ask. Okay, so let's listen to this audio and I'll ask you some questions afterwards. Okay? I love working in the music business. It's so interesting and every day is different. How is the audio? Is it too the soft? The first thing I do every day is I check my email messages. Many fans write emails to me and I like reading what they write to okay. me. I write a couple of replies to my fans and then I surf around on some music websites to see what the music journalists say let about me. Let me actually restart that audio because I was then talking I over that. it. Okay, so let me restart this audio. Okay, so I'll let you listen. I love working in the music business. It's so interesting and every day is different. The first thing I do every day is I check my email messages. Many fans write emails to me and I like reading what they write to me. 
I write a couple of replies to my fans, and then I surf around on some music websites to see what the music journalists say about me. Then I leave the house and go to a small French cafe for breakfast. London is a very busy city, and I enjoy relaxing with my cup of coffee, and I watch the world go by while I read my newspaper and a couple of music magazines. I usually only eat a pastry with my coffee. I never feel hungry in the morning. At about 11 o'clock, my car arrives and takes me to the studio, which is about 10 miles outside the city. Okay, so I'm going to I meet the other there. members of the band. So, the first question I'm going to ask you guys. What is the first thing she does every day? Check her YouTube. No? <laughs> what is the first thing that she does every day? Check emails. Check email messages. Very good. She checks email messages every day. First thing when she wakes up. Okay. Second question. What city does she live in? Did you catch? What city does she live in? London. Very good. London. She lives in London. And then last one here. What does she read at the cafe? What does she read at the cafe? Is it magazine? Is it newspaper? Actually, it was a newspaper. Yeah, she reads the newspaper. And music, well, music magazines, I believe, was in the morning before she leaves it, goes to the cafe. Okay? Yeah, so these are some good things. Okay, so we have some very good listeners today, this morning. Everyone's awake. Okay? So, kind of reflecting. So let's reflect on this, um, this audio that I played for you guys. So what were you listening to? What were you listening to? What was she talking about? What was the topic? Yeah, just the information, yeah, some an, an informational audio. Yeah. What was the uh, topic? Her job? Yeah. Something more on the lines of uh, maybe her morning routine, what, what, her daily life, okay, her daily life. So do you think, what, was it easy to listen to? Yeah, daily life, daily activity. Good. Was the audio list easy to listen to? This is something that we have to look out for as well. And some people say yes. Yeah, with English, I tried to pick a kind of audio where, you know, there's different accents. So she kind of had a... Uh, British accent and kind of or not kind of very different <laughs> from my uh, from my accent so that's something to also think about and um, that would kind of go into question number three on why it was difficult so kind of what challenges um, are there for listening to these kinds of or just to any audio in in, uh, in class okay? so now let's think about our students so what are some challenges that our students have with listening. What makes listening difficult for students? So like we talked about before, maybe um, the accents, the way people speak, maybe one challenge. So what are some other challenges your students may have with listening? I'll probably, I'll try to slow down a little bit, see some of the, uh, the chat catching up with me. So new words, yeah, vocabulary. Vocabulary is a very big one. Yeah. Speed, yes, I agree. Speed is a very big factor. Slang, yes, so like kind of nuanced expressions. So what, what might mean um, one word in another country will mean something totally different in uh, another country. So I think an example of that is in uh, England, uh, or in the U.S., we have shopping carts. In England, they have trolleys. So it's a little bit of different uh, terminology, different vocabulary, yeah, idioms. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's go over through some of them here. So some things um, students may have trouble with, the uneven skills in the classroom. So like kind of taking all of these things that uh, you guys have said together. So one student might know a lot more vocabulary, another student's a little bit lower in the vocabulary. And leading into the lack of vocabulary. Okay. As well as lack of background knowledge. So um, I'll talk about a lot, I'll talk about background knowledge a bit, in a bit. Um, it's very important to kind of set up, set up the students to listen. And we'll talk about that more in depth soon. And then speed, you know, like all of you have said, if uh, the, the audio or if you're speaking too quickly, the, the students can't keep up with, um, with the, what they're listening to and understanding. Uh, for me, an example of when I learned um, to speak Korean, a lot of times I can kind of listen, listen to the conversations and understand it. But by the time that uh, I fully understand the topic, the conversation has moved, so I can't really say anything, you know, can't really respond or contribute to the conversation. Okay. And then last, kind of un unfamiliar pronouns and nouns. So that kind of goes together with background knowledge. Okay. So now, what are some challenges as teachers? So we looked at the students. As teachers, uh, what kind of challenges do you guys have when trying to teach listening? What kind of struggles uh, do you guys encounter? So trying to like kind of get the focuses on uh, what challenges we face and then kind of see how we can overcome the challenges together. So some of the challenges that you might have, like we talked about mixed level classes. Uh, in Korea, when I taught in the public school system, almost every single class had mixed level. So I had some students that can talk to me almost fluently in English, but you know, the other students maybe haven't really mastered the ABCs or phonics yet. So there's kind of that big gap that we have to uh, really remember about the students sometimes. Okay. And then class size. So some challenges of listening, if the class size gets a little bit too big, you know, can be a bit difficult to, that comes a little bit more into like classroom management as well can get a bit more difficult, okay? And then lack of resources. So how can we teach listening if we don't have many uh, options for resources? Okay. So we're going to take a look at these challenges and then kind of uh, think of things to kind of help overcome all of these, all right? So looking at a listening activity. So let's look at a listening activity. So if, if we open the book, and tell the students to follow these directions here. Um, do you think this would be an effective way to uh, start a listening lesson? So just going in, okay, students, open your book to page 34. We are going to listen and circle the number, then we'll listen again. What is the answer? Okay. So a lot of times uh, you just kind of follow the book. Do you think this is an effective uh, listening activity to do with the students? I think this is kind of a, a way to teach listening or optimal, a good way. So just kind of going through these uh, simple steps in the listening activity. In my opinion, there's a lot more that we can do as a teacher. So with these listening activities. Okay? So we're going to go kind of in through the steps of a listening activity. So this is kind of the basic way of doing a listening activity, but as teachers, there's a lot more. There's a lot more that we can do for our students. All right, and so let's kind of go over the different stages of listening, all right? So how to teach listening? So we start with the pre-listening stage, preparing the students to listen. So this kind of involves the background knowledge and kind of setting up the scene for the students. Okay? And then during listening. So we have the students listen, but then we also want to give them a task. So giving them a task allows them to be more active. So we talked about active listeners. Okay? So giving them a task to do while listening. Okay? And then after listening. So we have more practice. 
So this is where the games, more activities come in that involve listening. So these are the three kind of stages. So we have pre-listening, during listening, and after listening. And we'll go kind of more in-depth uh, with each of these stages. Okay? So, kind of going back to uh, the activity I did earlier, it kind of was similar to that basic, okay, we're going to listen to something and then ask questions and answer. So there was no real pre-listening stage. I asked you after you listened what the topic was and all that. So when I, if I were to do this again, I would kind of let you guys know already what the topic would be. Say, okay, uh, today class we're going to listen to uh, someone's daily routine. So I want you to listen carefully and we'll go over some answers. Okay? Or go over some questions. And then so if the main topic is um, morning routines, then you can ask the students for input as well. Get them uh, more in the scene and get them um, and kind of in that mindset of what they're going to learn of morning routines. So kind of using the motivation. So this is what I'm talking about with asking the students questions, um, trying to engage them into the topic, into the lesson. So asking them, you know, uh, what they already know <clears throat> about the topic or trying to personalize can be an, an, another way to kind of get the pre-listening stage. Instead of just, you know, letting them listen to an audio without any context, it's kind of makes things uh, harder for them when it can be easier by going through these. Okay. And then again, like I talked about, contextualizing. So setting up the scene, um, using pictures, okay. make predictions. So if, you know, again, some of the textbooks, uh, there's a lot of pictures that have like the, the scene of what they're going to listen to. So kind of do like a picture walk as well. You can ask them about uh, about the pictures and set, setting the scene for them to listen. And then kind of preparing. So depending on which part of the lesson uh, they're in, so say uh, it's the beginning of a lesson, maybe pre-teach. Pre-teach some vocabulary, pre-teach some grammar, so that when, you, they do, when they do go into the listening of the audio, um, they, will, they can more easily understand what they're listening to. Uh, instead of kind of listening uh, listening, and then trying to figure out what it means while they're listening. Okay? So this is the pre-listening stage. Okay, any questions so far? Anything I need to go, go back over a little bit? Is everyone doing okay? Hope I'm not speaking too quickly. <laughs> Thank you for the uh, roses. <laughs> okay, no questions? Okay, all right, let's continue on. So let's kind of uh, give more examples. So let's, let's start with number one was motivation. So what questions? We can ask the students questions, build interest, and background knowledge. So we have this unit here, unit six. Uh, I like playing tennis. Okay, I like playing tennis. So the topic is uh, sports. So things that maybe in sports and what things they like to do. So some questions that you can ask the students. So this is before listening, so remember. So just asking the students, oh, what sports do you like to play? So chat, what, is there any sports that you guys like playing? Personally, I like playing tennis, so that's why I chose this unit. It was perfect for me. I like playing tennis. Is there any sports that you guys like or any activities? that you guys like to play? Any volleyball players? Hiking? Yeah, nice. Now that the weather's getting hopefully better, do more hiking. So hiking. Any other sports? Not a lot of sports fans. <laughs> Not many sports fans in there. Badminton, okay. Baseball, yeah, not playing, just watching. Yeah. Badminton, good. Dodgeball, yes, my students, mostly the boy students like dodgeball. I think there were some female students that did like it as well. They also liked uh, kickball. 
football, ping pong, swimming, or dumbbell exercises, weightlifting. Yeah, I like weightlifting as well. Football, okay. And then how about anything that you don't like? Like, uh, let's see, baseball, I probably uh, don't like to play as much baseball. Running. <laughs> Was running a good, uh, you like or don't like? Frisbee, oh. We actually played Frisbee uh, last week. <laughs> out here. Yeah, Frisbee's pretty fun. Yeah. If you can throw it properly. <laughs> you don't want it to, I think I threw it and got stuck in a tree once, so. Uh, <laughs> running, no one likes running. We're running, the thing with running that's interesting is it's the most important for a lot of sports. <laughs> for a lot of the sports, you know, the, the endurance comes from the running. Okay? So these are some questions that you can engage the students into the topic. Okay? So some other things you can do, make, maybe making a list. So having the uh, students talk together and like kind of maybe write down a list of the sports that they like and don't like, all that. Ooh, boxing. Ooh, boxing, yeah? yeah? Nice, okay, so these are kind of some motivational things. Kind of pulling the students into the topic, right? And then now contextualizing. So this is setting the scene, so we talked about. So just looking at the picture here, picture A. So you can ask students, who do you see in the picture? Um, you see you know, two boys and one girl and a dog. And then kind of asking all these basic questions, setting up the scene, putting the, the uh, audio into context for listening. Okay? Just send some simple questions that you can ask to the students as well. Okay? And then the preparation, so kind of what we talked about. So reviewing the vocabulary, previewing new vocabulary, just setting the students up to kind of succeed in listening as well. Okay? And then as well, if you want, you can extend, extend the vocabulary a bit. So they, maybe they know, they know the sports that they're going to learn already. They know tennis, they know baseball. So maybe you can introduce, you know, tennis racket, or glove, okay? kind of extending the vocabulary a bit. Okay? So those are kind of the three, kind of going step by step into how to um, use those kind of uh, stage or the tips within the stage in your classroom. Okay? All right. Okay, so again, kind of review the general tips. So as a teacher as well, um, Make sure to be prepared, like, like always. Um, Pre-listen to the dialogue or the songs that you're going to teach because uh, there will be times where maybe there will be some extra vocabulary that uh, your students don't know that aren't covered by the book, depending on you know, like the level of your students. So maybe you need to kind of, uh, kind of extend even more from the, the vocabulary. Okay. And then remember, giving a clear purpose to the students. Remember talking about the details. What is the main idea of the audio? And then, you know, what is the end, finding an answer for that? Kind of keeping it clear. And then also, so um, not going to go too far into it today, but the grouping students together, so allowing the students to work together. So giving a lot of student student time to talk and to find the answers together. This would be another good, uh, good way to help with mixed level classes. So maybe a student doesn't work well by himself, if he's you know, lower level. So putting them together in a group to find the answers will kind of help that, um, help that way. So it's kind of hoping to uh, set the classroom environment in a more helpful way. So making sure the students uh, kind of look at it positively to help each other, okay? So it's the pre-listening stage. So having talked about the pre-listening stage, so I have this new new unit. We have a unit three here. So let's kind of go through this. So I'm going to throw this to, to you guys, the chat. So let's go through motivational or motivation, context, and preparation together. And using this unit, what kind of motivation can you do for the students? So can you think of any questions or activities that you could do with the students using um, this unit, I can play the piano. So this one looks like instruments. So what kind of questions 
can you ask them to like get their background knowledge and build interest? motivation what questions can you ask what instrument can you play do you like music are you good what kind of music do you like good. so another uh, kind of activity that you can do maybe maybe you show them a video of an orchestra <laughs> Show them a video of an orchestra and then afterwards maybe ask them if they knew any of the instruments in the, in the video. What can you see in the picture? Good. Yeah, setting it up. What kind of music do you like? Okay. Good. So those are some good questions you can ask. And then as well, you can make a list. Uh, so also, what music do you like? You can do the opposite. What music do you not like? Okay. So I'm doing both sides. All right. And then context. Do you play instruments? Yes. Can you guess what content you will hear later? Yeah. Can you? Yeah, you can ask them. Can you guess what what we're going to learn today? Instead of telling them, okay, we're going to learn about this. Just making predictions. Good. That's a good prediction question that you can ask. Okay. Yeah. What's your musical talent? Yeah. <laughs> I have no musical talent. <laughs> okay, so these are some good things. Just to kind of think about how to uh, get the students ready. Can Lisa play the piano? Very good, context. And then you can make the predictions, yes or no. Okay? So these are the kind of things. And then preparation kind of goes uh, what we talked about. Yeah, you're kind of listening ahead of time and kind of preparing for the students. All right? So that is the pre-listening stage. Yeah, so very good, everyone. Um, before I continue on, any questions on pre-listening? I'm just gonna go ahead with the during listening. So now during listening. So this is kind of one of the more important parts of uh, the listening stage, the activity. So here's like the overall listening routine, usually. So we have listen, and then listen and repeat, and then kind of listen and act. Okay, so. During the listening stage, this is where you know we ask more questions about the audio, concept checks, um, do they understand what they listen to? So kind of what I did afterwards when we listened to uh, that morning routine earlier. Okay? And then active listening. Okay? So like we talked about in the pre-listening, we made some predictions, and then you can do some uh, checking, checking the predictions. Were the students correct? Were what we guessed correct? Yes or no? And I'm going through that. And then also you can do some TPR activities uh, while listening. So um, I'll go into uh, some TPR activities that you can do. Okay. So during listening here, so obviously we check for the understanding, check for the details. So you would play the audio and uh, kind of check all of that as well. Does Jenny like playing tennis or not? And then kind of predict yes or no and all that. Okay. So TPR, for those that don't know, is total physical response. So it's getting the students a bit more active using their body. Okay? So there's ways to do this while listening as well. Okay? And why is this so helpful? Why is TPR helpful? So students can listen, students can watch, and they can imitate. And this is multi-sensory. Uh, so some other uh, seminars I've talked about uh, different types of learners. So this kind of uh, adheres to different uh, learner types. So it helps this, the visual learners, helps the auditory learners, and helps the physical learners. So the visual learners are, you know, they need to see things, the visual. That's how they, that's the best way that they learn. Then auditory are the listeners. And then physical students need to use their hands. They need to do some sort of action to kind of fix the, uh, or not fix the, just kind of get the uh, language or depending on the subject. Okay? So how can we do that in English class with listening? So you can have the students use actions and movements for the vocabulary. Okay? 
So if, like here, our vocabulary today is um, sports. So you can have each word and have the students create actions for each of the words. Okay? So tennis, you can uh, swing the tennis, tennis racket, or they can do like a serve. Okay? Soccer, they can, you know, pretend to kick, okay? kick the goal. Okay? And then you kind of go through each of them. Okay? Baseball, they can swing a bat. Okay? So these are different. Uh, they each make kind of movements to match match the vocabulary. So in this case with sports, you can come up with different uh, actions with the students to, uh, to learn the vocabulary. Okay? And then afterwards, after they each make an action, you can create kind of a dialogue or listen to um, audio and then have the students do the actions while they listen. So if I were to read this out to my class, last, last weekend I went to the park, Harry was there too, he likes playing soccer. So when the students hear soccer, they would do the action. Okay. So when you kind of go through that um, throughout the, uh, the dialogue and throughout the sentences. And then to kind of make it a little more fun, you can try to go quicker. Yeah. Say the uh, sentence is faster and then the students have to kind of go through each of the actions very quickly. Okay. So that's kind of one way to uh, incorporate TPR. Um, another kind of game that you can do is called Grab It. Um, so this is kind of an active listening. So you can do different ways. Uh, you can select a vocabulary word for the students to listen for, or you can, you know, choose a sentence or anything. Okay? Or you give a list of words for, um, and the students have to find out which one's out of place. And how you would play this game, as you can see, like in the picture, you would have your left hand out, okay, and then the student would, um, you would have a group of students, ideally, like in a circle, and then one student would have their left hand out, and the student next to them will put their right finger in the hand, okay, of the student next to them. And then as you read the, read the uh, dialogue or listen to the dialogue, um, whichever word that you choose as a teacher, when they hear it, the student needs to quickly move its finger out and the other student needs to try to grab at the same time. So you would kind of try to grab and lift up at the same time. So it's kind of like a, yeah, another TPR kind of activity um, to kind of deal with your students. It might sound a little complicated, but uh, yeah, the students would uh, find this a bit fun. Okay. All right, yeah, so you would kind of read through here. So if, if the uh, word I chose was tennis, when I get to the word tennis, this, they either try to grab the finger or kind of make sure they don't get grabbed. And the winner, the winner of that usually is the person that able, is able to grab a finger and lift up at the same time. Okay? So that's kind of one activity idea. All right, so that was the during listening phase. And now we're going to go into the after listening stage. So this is kind of the extending the listening and getting more practice. Okay? So you kind of ask the students, you know, kind of simple reaction to the audio or what, what they listened to, if they enjoyed it or not. A lot of times when I ask my students, they would always say no. But, you know, sometimes they do. Sometimes it's a bit fun, depending on what they're listening to. And then kind of extending, like I said, asking more questions. Um, about the audio, and then kind of the different grammar structures and vocabulary, and then more listening activities, okay? more listening activities. So let's go into the after listening and give you more activity ideas uh, that you can use with your students. So here, um, this one's called Sound Hunt. So if, say for the lower level students, you want to work a little bit with phonics, so you can have an audio, but then also pick a phonics target for the students to listen for, okay? So for this exercise, I'm going to ask you guys to look for the long A sound. So listen for the long A, and then tell me what word, what word has the long A in this audio, okay? Unit 6. I like playing tennis. 
One, warm up. Track 49. A. Look, listen, and circle. I like playing tennis. Do you like playing tennis? No, I don't. Do you like playing soccer? Yes, I do. Does Harry like playing baseball? Yes, he does. Okay. So what word in there had the long A sound in there? Long A phonics target. Kind of a simple activity. Well, play was in there. Baseball, good. Ball, oh, it's not too long, you know. Play in baseball. Yeah, you're good. Baseball. Very good. So, yeah, so the, the AE has the, the baseball, but actually play as well is the AY. It has the long A phonics target as well. So there's different ways to kind of do this. You can pick different phonics targets. This is kind of for the, kind of the, the, the younger students with the phonics practice, or just you can also do it with older students to kind of test them a bit and challenge them. Okay. So that's kind of one kind of a sound hunt activity. And then a, kind of a listen and say. So here the teacher would say, uh, say the expressions or a sentence and the students will have to say the number so they have to listen carefully so like saying tennis soccer baseball you know they'd say the number with it one two three okay so just kind of uh you can do multiple numbers and the students kind of have to uh, tell you the correct number for each of the words okay? obviously we can't do this since not everyone can speak but yeah so there's that and then another activity can be a whisper race. Uh, my students enjoyed doing this one. So this involves kind of listening and speaking. So you would have the students in a line, form a line, and then give one of the students a word or a sentence and make sure that the students whisper it to the next student. And they kind of go down the line until it reaches the last student. And you can do different ways to what the last student does. The last student can either write it down, or what I've done before is they have to draw a picture of the word at the end. And it can be a race if you have multiple teams. Yeah. So kind of visual, uh, visual of what the game would look like. So you have the students in the line here. One student gets a card, and then they slowly whisper to each student until the last student. So I will say, as a teacher, just be careful. Make sure that the students do in fact, whisper. Um, a lot of times where I've done it, I would be in the back of the class and I can hear the student in the front. So that's not really whispering. So just make sure that they are whispering as well as actually um, using, using English as well. Uh, sometimes there's a, you know, I'll give, the, I'll give the students the word snake and then they would say the word in Korean to the next student and then goes all the way down. So make sure that they're also using the language. So this is a, a whisper race game that you can do. Okay. And then other things that you can do, listen and spot the difference. So you can have the students listen to the audio, but then as a teacher, you can rewrite the story and tell the story again and uh, change a few things and see if the students can spot what's different from what they listen to and what you told them again. Okay. And then listen and draw. Okay, so getting close with time here. Um, so here, um, hopefully, if you guys can have a pen and paper, I'm going to do this activity with everyone. So what I'm going to do, oh wait, let's see the so I'm going to tell a story, and I want you guys to write down, or not write down, Draw, draw the story that I um, tell you. So I'm going to tell you a story and I want you to kind of draw the scene, okay? So hopefully if you have a paper or a notebook, um, you can get that ready and we'll kind of go through this story and uh, I have my story that I wrote here in front of me, okay?
So if you guys are ready, can you let me know? And then I can read, read my story for you. So this is our listen and draw activity. Okay. So some people ready? Okay. So, okay, here we go. So as I walk towards my new house, I take a look at the beautiful view in front of me. This is what I see. In the middle, there is a big house. The house has one door and three windows. On the roof, there is a chimney. This is my dream home. On the top right side, there is a big sun shining down. Beside the house, under the sun, there is a large apple tree on a hill. On the left side of the house, there is a pond. In the pond, there is a frog and three birds flying above it with two clouds. It is like a dream. Okay. So this kind of activity, like this particular story, would be a good way to practice prepositions. Okay. So I used a lot of prepositions in the story. Let's see. So how um, hopefully your drawings would look like be something like this. Okay. So I talked about having the house in the middle, and then three windows, and then a chimney. And on the top right side, there's a sun with an apple tree on a hill. Okay. And the left side has a frog and a pond, birds, and two clouds. Okay. So this is kind of an activity for the students to actively listen and kind of draw. Okay. So kind of when you make your story, kind of look at the vocabulary like we talked about that the students might not know. So sometimes a student might not know chimney or maybe even roof <clears throat> or dream, shining. Okay. So it's kind of uh, looking at the words that the students might not know. And these would be hopefully the words that you pre-taught before the, uh, that they had learned previously in a, a lesson. Okay. All right. And I think I have one more. One more drawing activity. <clears throat> so usually here, um, you can do this with students in groups. Um, you would have the students uh, give the students an image, and then have the students describe the image and have them uh, draw it. Have the other students draw. So I'm going to pick an image and kind of give a description and see if you guys uh, can guess what the object is after drawing it, okay? So I have my instructions, see if you can guess what it is, All right? So this will be the, the last uh, drawing activity. Hopefully, I don't expect everyone to be like artists or anything. So let's give this a try. So if you're ready. So the first one, Draw a big circle. So draw a big circle in the middle. And then on the top of the circle, draw two medium sized circles. Okay. Then in the middle of the first circle, draw a small circle. It's a lot of circles. Okay. okay, next, above the small circle, draw two ovals. Then inside of each oval, at the bottom, draw a tiny circle. So there's two ovals, draw a tiny circle inside at the bottom of each of them. And then last one here, 
under the small circle, draw a half circle that looks like a watermelon, like a slice of watermelon. Okay. Can you guess? Any guesses on what this is? Hopefully, smiling bear. Okay. See how good my uh, my instructions were. <clears throat> and I went pretty basic, similar to mine. Another bear. A bear, okay. <laughs> so I gave pretty basic instructions. So it should have, maybe it could have, I could have done a bit better. So what I was going for, yeah, so a lot of people had a bear. I was actually going for Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, we had one at the end. Yeah, so it was Mickey Mouse. I didn't do all of the uh, all of the uh, kind of characteristics, but I tried my best to uh, get the Mickey Mouse drawing in there. <laughs> I would love to see what you guys drew when if there was an opportunity. But this is another kind of uh, fun listening activity you can do with your students. Okay. So, yeah, I know I'm guessing a lot of pupils look like bears, but yeah, I was trying to go for Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Okay, so kind of to recap with the whole listening on how to teach listening and help the students uh, to learn listening. It's kind of going through the, pre, the three stages. Okay? So the pre-listening stage, you're preparing the students to listen, tapping into their background knowledge, getting building interest uh, into the topic that they're going to listen to, and as well as uh, building the scene, setting the scene for them that of what they're going to listen to. And then giving tasks, okay? giving tasks, so during listening. So whether, you know, like we talked about, whether it's um, a phonics target that they listen for or some kinds of TPR activities that the students can listen for, or just giving them simple, uh, giving them the questions beforehand uh, and that they look for while listening. So it's giving them tasks to do while they listen. And then last, more practice. So after listening, having more fun, having more practice. So these are kind of the basic stages of you know teaching listening. Um, it'll really help the students uh, kind of get ready, ready for the uh, listening lessons. And I feel like the most most important thing is the pre-listening stage. So a lot of the uh, the knowledge and everything, getting them ready to listen, would be the most. Uh, important uh, stage for the students because if they if they aren't really well prepared how can they um, realistically do the tasks that you ask them later or do the practice later so <clears throat> make sure that the students are prepared and the rest of the things kind of will come naturally as well well yeah naturally and also like it would be uh, a bit easier to do the, the stages following, okay? So that was what I had for you today. Was there any questions that you guys had for me um, that maybe you were holding <laughs> through, the, through the presentation? Uh, if you had any uh, questions later on, my email is here. Uh, we'll answer them uh, as quickly as I can. And uh, so if you can think of something or maybe you watch the video later and didn't understand some of the uh, things I talked about or maybe needed a better explanation of the activities that I talked about, feel free to send me an email and I would be glad to help you with whatever I can. So I'll be here for a little bit. So if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat and I uh, hope you all have a great day and a great week. Happy Monday. We also have a uh, QR code before everyone leaves. <laughs> so feel free to scan our QR codes here, fill out a survey, and uh, follow us on WeChat.
Yeah, and Weibo, everything. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you for thank you for uh, attending today. I'll be doing a, a speaking workshop next week as well, same time. So if hopefully see you all next week as well. It's been fun.